Welcome to Road Rage Video, I mean Rollin' Rambles. Today we're going to do something just a little bit different. Instead of talking about tech or possibly uh, politics, we're going to talk about why the younger generations suck more than the older generations. And we're also going to talk about why it's not actually their fault. See, one of the things that us pesky older people, and by older I mean not teenage or 20, one of the things us pesky older people forget is that we're the parents of the kids we complain about. Now, granted, I'm not the best parent in the world, but I'm not the worst by far. The worst by far does exist, and often it exists way closer than I would like it to. The hell spawn, the demons brought forth, from the violently lava-filled vaginas of these evil, scummy, awful, no-good parents have infinite ways to ruin our days. And because we live in perhaps the most, um, I can't say that word on YouTube, so what's a different one? Um, doormat? Society? Passive? Society? Um, intellectually abusive? Society? <laughs> that I know of? Dishonest? Society? Because we live in a society, and that society is all of these negative attributes. There is basically no way for bad behavior to realistically be curbed unless you happen to live somewhere that has cooler heads that have so far prevailed in the governance of that area. Even then, um, the emasculation, um, beating, beating into submission by larger governments of the smaller governments can, can cause the same thing. But what I'm getting at is, you know, the stereotype about participation trophies. Well, I'm pretty sure participation trophies started becoming a thing when I was young. Now, I never got a participation trophy that I'm aware of. Um, I got some spelling bee trophies. They weren't like, oh, look, you won all the grand prizes, but I, I did win some and I got some trophies for it. <clears throat> Pretty sure everyone that attended didn't exactly walk away with a fake plastic trophy. But the participation trophy has been a thing for a lot longer than many of you watching have even been alive, and possibly longer than me. Because the whole oversensitive, let's worry too much about everybody's feelings thing started a long time ago arguably started in the 70s. Arguably started with that influx of the 70s feminists that uh, basically they use things like political correctness and, um, you know, the, the whole, like, we've been treated poorly, therefore you must treat us as superiors in order to restore the fair balance. Which, <laughs> you know, the fair balance would be you know, everybody being treated equally, which would mean equally poorly if everybody's being treated poorly. But no, the, the notion that, you know, people who have it more difficult for whatever reason, people who have it more difficult should be given greater status such that they are protected from being harmed for being difficult. Now, this on its face is a noble goal. And I'm autistic, so I'm high-functioning autistic, so I grew up not knowing how to act, mostly because I was autistic, not because my parents did anything wrong, but because no matter what they did, I would do whatever I wanted and uh, would forget what they said or would think that they were wrong and therefore I would do what I want. You know, I just, I didn't really care what they said. I did what I wanted to do, <clears throat> to some extent. Um, that, that wasn't entirely true, but my parents were the style that would, um, that would, you know, beat you, spank you into doing what they wanted. You know, they would rule with fear and fear doesn't work on autistic people because what they do is instead of, um, obeying you and, you know, naturally they end up obeying you out of fear. Um, but with malice, because if there's one thing an autistic person resents, it is someone else trying to force them to do things um, and make them do what they don't want to do 
um, especially if there's a disproportionate reaction. So that didn't work out very well for them, uh, and it didn't work out very well for me either, because if there was an, an important lesson to be learned in there, then I did not learn it because I assumed it was BS like all the rest of the stuff they tried to beat into me. Um, and I come from parents who are, I think, either late boomer or early um, early Gen X. I, I, it depends on where you define that line, but I, I came from that sort of parentage. <clears throat> and their parents were World War I, World War II parents, uh, mostly World War I. So, uh, after World War I, I mean. So because of this, this lineage, um, their parents were very strict, harsh, you know, they just like if you think that any of the spankings I got were rough, <laughs> boy, you should have you seen some of the pictures my dad showed me of what, what he ended up with at one point. But that this is all a story for another day. The point is that generations have softened over time, and that is not inherently a bad thing. Um, if you have, like I say, if you have to rule people by beating them, then you're not really ruling them honestly. You're ruling them through force and fear, and people don't like that. And it, it is actually um, a, a, a common reason why so many people today suffer through this people-pleasing attitude, um, why the whole political correctness thing became so big, because, hey, if, you're, if you have to be soft, you know, you have to treat everybody in a soft way, then you're not allowed to stick up. You're not allowed to disagree with authority figures um, because they know what's best, but also you're not allowed to disagree um, with people who are claiming, claiming, not necessarily being, but claiming to be more sensitive to the unfortunate. You know, people who are claiming to be doing the right thing for other people to not feel left out and so on. This might sound familiar because not only is it the way that the social justice warrior lunatics and the woke scolds behave today, but it's the way that the politically correct lunatics behaved in the 80s and 90s. They, they were authorities not because they would beat you to death, but because they could assign you the label of a bad person and supposedly convince other people to do the same. This is not a new issue, but it is an issue that has slowly crept over time into the mainstream. You see, there's a reason that movies from long time ago, 50s, 60s, whatever, uh, but there's a reason that really old movies might have husbands slapping their wives and it not lead to the husband going to prison. Um, it, it's not that that's a good thing. It's that um, if you got hit back then, you, you, if, you were not, if you were not being hit in a way that would cause some kind of serious harm, you dealt with it. Um, in, that, in the case of the norms of the day, women kind of just had to uh, deal with it sometimes, but women also equally could slap men and uh, they would be protected. Now, what's happened is the men are no longer allowed to slap the women when they misbehave, and the women are allowed to slap the men and get away with it universally. So we've gotten to the point where it, we're sort of in an inverted 60s. All this is, is somewhat straying from the point, but not entirely because it led to what Gen Z and Gen Alpha are today. <clears throat> and I feel very bad for them because they didn't do anything to earn this garbage dystopian future that they are being brought up in. They, they, they didn't cause this. They, they have no dog in this fight, so to speak. It's not their fault that the parents and the parents of their parents and the society around them all decided to go soft and be crappy. So you can take the softness too far and end up with this, this population of people where some of them just don't care and end up basically just punching their way through everything um, because they don't care what the moral crusaders do. Um, they're gonna punch them if they get in the way. No, oh, you're a bad person if you do something. Well, I'm going to do it anyway, and what are you going to do about it? Oh, well, we're cowards, so we'll F off. 
And then you have another category of people that are people pleasers. They're afraid to say something offensive, afraid to do something that other people might not like. They end up being extreme approval seekers. Not because, not this is important, not because they seek approval, but because they're afraid of disapproval. Because disapproval is bad and evil and mean and so on. If, if other people disapprove of you, then it's probably because you, you are being a bad person. And that's sort of the lesson. That's not the way that it was supposed to be, but that's the lesson that sort of landed from the politically correct culture that was becoming prominent in the 70s and 80s. Um, and, you know, in the 90s, you struck sort of a balance between the PC loons and the people who actually have some sense. Um, so the 90s was sort of a golden era because everything could still be kind of edgy and whatnot. The 2000s, the only thing that kept it afloat in terms of, you know, the whole humor and edginess and all that is the internet because the internet was not the mainstream. So people could post edgy jokes on YouTube. PewDiePie could drop in bombs all day long. Uh, but the problem is that in the uh, early 2010s, 2012 to 2014, in that general area, you saw major switches flip and the rise of the social justice warrior, the internet feminist, the wokies, you know, you name it, they're all radical leftists in the end, but you saw that rise in the early 2010s where the politically correct became the master bullies of all of society. So if you think about what Gen Z went through, Gen Z, unlike me, I am technically what they call a zenial. The early 80s um, constitutes the zenial. It's a millennial, which technically is 1980 to 2000 births, but millennials that were born in the earliest part of the millennial birth range are called zennials, usually before 1985 or 86, I believe it is. And a zennial is a, a pretty unique subcategory of millennial in that I did not grow up with the internet. Um, I got my first taste of the internet when I was, I want to say 13, 12, 13, somewhere in that range. It was sometime in middle school, in like seventh or eighth grade, that I finally got my hands on the internet for longer than just like, look, you can type a search. And I type like two searches. Okay, moving on. And, and nothing ever came of that. So I didn't grow up with internet the first formative 12, 13 years of my life, basically all my preteen years, were not dominated by the internet, but, I, but were dominated by somewhat universal access to computers and technology. Um, I watched, you know, I watched the rise of um, color TV and touch-tone telephones everywhere. <clears throat> yes, um, I... <laughs> I know some people to this day that have pulse landline phones, but I watched this, this technology explosion as I grew up, but the internet was not part of it. I, did, I never got to dial up to a BBS. I never got to do any of that pre-internet communication type stuff. The closest I ever got was America Online, and honestly, that's you know, basically the internet because th that was part of it whenever I first got my hands on it. I didn't get to play with CompuServe back in the old days. I didn't get to play with, uh, what do you call it, FidoNet and all that stuff. But even people who came after me, like I have siblings, most of my siblings would be considered millennials as well, which is really weird considering that some of them are way <laughs> younger than me. So yeah, hang on a second. Somebody just pulled out in front of me and I, think I'm going to have to move. There you go. But yeah, it, it, it's strange to be a millennial and also have these other kids be millennials because um, I'm thinking of one in particular that is over 10 years younger than I am. Um, they have not realistically known a world without internet, though their earlier childhood would have been without internet. 
there's actually a couple of them <laughs> that fall in that camp. But they didn't have internet when they were little. And by little, I mean like five, not like 12. But by the time they were 12, internet was everywhere. And I, I mean everywhere. Everyone had to have internet access, even if it was going to the library to get on. So we have the rise of the internet generation, for some reason, still classified as millennials uh, along with me, even though it doesn't make much sense to lump me and them together because the whole point of the millennial generation seems to be the, the rise of the internet. But then what we're discussing is Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Gen Z would be 2000 onward, um, up to a certain point that I'm not entirely sure about, 2015, I don't know. Uh, Gen Alpha is basically the kids of today. You know, uh, pretty much anyone born after 2015. Gen Alpha are the iPad babies, basically. Um, they're the kids that get a friggin' device shoved in their face. Shut them up. Now, there is a big difference between these kids and my little siblings that I'd shove a Disney VHS in their face to shut them up. And that is that a Disney VHS is just a thing that is the same. But an internet-connected tablet or phone, there's virtually unlimited possibilities for interaction with this device. You can't really get bored with something that can do anything. So there's this normalization of doing everything on a screen and not interacting with normal human beings in a normal human way. But that's Gen Alpha. They're getting screwed because basically millennials are idiots. And a lot of time has been spent talking about how millennials are idiots. I'm not claiming that I'm some sort of glorious exception, but at least I'm a zenial, so I've got that, I've got that like little gold flake to throw on my crown of turds. So I'll take it. But Gen Z had to grow up in a time, think about what, what happened. The internet was edgy when Gen Z was young. Gen Z grew up with YouTube in their childhood, with, um, you know, Cartoon Network was still a big thing, like, you know, Futurama and all that stuff. That stuff's going to be really fond to people uh, from Gen Z. They still had some semblance of the common culture that comes with people watching the same shows, you know, people... Um, doing the same things because the internet was out, but streaming services were still not the mainstream in the 2000s. They, and they really kind of didn't exist. Netflix came along, and um, but I don't want to go into the Netflix story. The bottom line is streaming wasn't really a thing. YouTube was still kind of growing up itself. So you, you had ubiquitous technology and internet access. You had access to the, the, the whole globe worth of information. And to this point, you did not have the great big control and censorship machine that is um, the social justice, cancel culture, and so on. None of that had landed yet. Damn, it got dark. It got dark quick. So even, even Gen Z largely grew up with access to fun, edgy, humorous, enjoyable, um, wild, you know, they still had some taste of the Wild West internet, um, fun content, you know, they, there are a lot of things that suck too, every generation gets that, but they, they got a taste of what it was like to really have a good time and be free on the internet. You know, 2000s 4chan before it became a glowy hub and the CIA, FBI, whatever ran the whole, runs the whole thing now. You know, this, this, this really free time when broadband had expanded, but the internet hadn't been clamped down on by ideologues yet. It was a glorious time, and that was their childhood. And they basically grew up with all this technology around them. But millennials, despite growing up with technology around them too, they really didn't know how to parent in the new internet age. And their parents didn't know how to do it either because it's a new thing and it's such a radical shift in all of humanity. And you've got to imagine someone who up until say, let's say they're born in 2000 and they and at age 13, 2013, <clears throat> that's when these social justice cancel culture freaks start taking over all of society 
seemingly from out of nowhere, even though the truth is that Marxism had been brewing in American universities for decades, largely thanks to the ignorance, um, willful or otherwise, of the people that, uh, you know, good people, all that is required for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. And they did nothing. You know, Marxists invaded the university slowly over time, inserted Marxist ideologue crap, and that eventually became a major, basically the definition of getting a higher education was getting a Marxist indoctrination. Um, and political correctness is actually part of this Marxist ideology. And no, I don't want to hear in the comments, I don't want you to be like, oh, that's no Marxism. You, you go read up if you really want to, but th this is just, I don't have time to have a long political discussion with you. So don't waste my time. I'll delete your comment if you do. The bottom line is that this Marxist ideology in introduced by communists, Russians, etc., uh, so that they could demoralize our society, There's, there is a whole thing behind this, and I don't want to get too deep in those weeds, but the seeds were planted in the 70s and 80s in universities, and over time they bloomed into this thing that suddenly just came crashing down in, in the early 2010s. Um, and to some extent, there's some, some government PSYOP stuff behind it. If you remember Occupy Wall Street and how that collapsed from seemingly from out of nowhere because a bunch of feminists showed up and started preaching intersectionality and that caused a ton of infighting and everything collapsed. Um, now everybody's fighting each other over what color their skin is instead of fighting the rich pricks that are screwing with you on a daily basis and sending all of your money overseas to Ukraine to be money laundered for the Democrats. So, way to go. Oh, way to go. You just, oh, you revolutionized the world with that crap. But imagine being a kid. None of this is your fault. <clears throat> None of this is your fault, but you, you, you get a taste of all this good stuff, and then the social justice walls come crashing down. Now, it's one thing if you're an adult, and the SJW lunatics start cancel culturing everybody left and right. And Me Too starts slamming people left and right. You know, all this clampdown stuff where it's like it's basically dangerous to exist and be outside of one of the precious protected identity groups. Just imagine being a kid during that time. All of a sudden you go from this like free society to the society where you're not allowed to say anything, otherwise you're going to be punished severely and probably not even by the institutions themselves so much as your other peers. Not even necessarily because those peers are have something some sort of a problem with what you say, but rather because those peers are afraid that if they do not virtue signal that what you said is unacceptable to them hard enough, if they don't do the two-minute hate from George Orwell's 1984 hard enough, then other people who do have power will take notice and punish them for it. It becomes this sort of circular, self-enforcing um, oppression. <clears throat> and it's one thing if you're an adult, but we're talking about a 13-year-old. We're talking about a 10-year-old. We're talking about somebody who has a pretty, a pretty, I'm going to say liberal, not as in political, but, you know, but just liberal as in classical liberal sort of upbringing. They have access to Wild West Internet that, you know, they can suddenly get information and media and such from all over the world um, throughout their childhood, but then all of a sudden... It's not allowed. You, you're not allowed to agree with reality in certain ways. You, if you slip up and you say the wrong thing, um, even if it's true, the truth will not set you free anymore. You're, you're taught in school about America and the founding of America and the ideals. That guy's being a dickhead um, and he needs to calm down. You, you know, the ideals America's founded on and and this happens. All of a sudden, it's like, you know, you, you spend your whole time, whole life being told, you know, work hard, be honest, have integrity, do right by people, and good things will come your way. Be a good person, and the world will be good back to you. Now, being a good person means being a bad person. Now, being a good person means hurting other people if they disagree with whatever you think other people disagree with lest they come after you because, guess what? Silence is violence. So yeah, I feel pretty bad for Gen Z and Gen Alpha. 
I feel bad for Gen Alpha because the iPad generation crap. First of all, put an Android tablet in front of your kid instead of an iPad, you dope. Why are you buying Apple products? But, you know, beside that, just they, they're, they grew up in this environment that is absolutely toxic that where, you know, the whole thing like you'd sell out your grandmother for a nickel, that kind of thing. There's, there's this, this hateful, cutthroat society where you're not allowed to live in reality, where you, you have to gaslight yourself. You have to abuse yourself intellectually to survive. You'd be pretty messed up too. So yeah, I feel pretty bad for them. Um, coincidentally, I think that, <clears throat> or ironically or amusingly or whatever, I think that the tides are about to turn because there are no shortage of reports online of teachers complaining about their damned middle and high school kids being the most racist, hateful, bigoted, nasty kids saying the most hurtful things imaginable. And they're like, what can I do about it? Well, you can't do anything about it. This is what happens. The pendulum always swings the other way and kids are rebellious by nature. I was rebellious by nature. I understand kids because kids and autistic people tend to be rebellious too. It's like, leave me alone. If you don't, I will hurt you until you do. So rebellion now is <laughs> dropping in bombs, saying things that aren't nice. We've come full circle. Kids are learning to be mean because that's the only way they can resist the oppressive garbage that this world has become. I'll leave it there. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. That guy in that Volkswagen needs to calm down too. Take care. Yeah.